Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is John Francis and I'm here to present Unbalanced Network Short Circuit. It's a new solution in ETAP 22. And in the traditional short circuit calculations, the system modeling is for three phase balance systems where all the system components are assumed to be balanced. The unbalanced characteristics due to an unbalanced fault, let's say line to ground, line to line, or line to line to ground at fault locations are handled by special connections of system sequence networks. But this modeling technique fails to properly represent unbalanced system components. The new unbalanced network short circuit module applies the phase domain modeling to represent each individual phase as described by the user and fully captures the system unbalanced features caused by any of the system components. We will cover a solution overview and discuss all the features available, um, the overall value proposition. Then I will go into the software and we will look at examples running AC and DC short circuit calculations, including shunt faults, simultaneous faults, and how this becomes the foundation for protection and coordination on these complex systems. Protective device duty evaluation is one of the main objectives to perform short circuit analysis for power systems. It validates ratings of existing devices under various operating conditions and it helps the users to select ratings for new devices. In many cases, three-phase short circuit provides higher fault currents comparing to other fault types, and most of existing computer programs performs device duty evaluation only based on three-phase fault currents. However, there are situations when other types of fault currents can be higher than the three-phase fault current, such as three-phase low voltage buses below a delta Y solid grounded transformer and low voltage systems. From time to time, it is required to perform device duty evaluations based on these other types of fault currents. ETEP's unbalanced network short circuit solution performs device duty based on fault currents for all relevant fault types and phases on the buses where evaluating devices are connected to. It conducts a comprehensive device duty evaluation for AC systems based on ANSI and IC standards. Once on the device duty evaluation is ran, it automatically calculates short circuit currents for all available fault types and phases and evaluates device ratings for each case. When there are marginal or critical violations, alerts will be raised and reported. In device duty, with unbalanced fault currents, there are some special considerations on device ratings. For example, based on ANSI standards, the ratings of a three-phase high-voltage circuit breaker for a line-to-ground fault can be higher than that for a three-phase fault under certain conditions. ETAP automatically takes these special cases into consideration in device duty evaluation with unbalanced fault currents. For short circuit faults, the program calculates the total short, total short circuit currents as well as the contributions of individual motors, generators, and utility ties in the system. Fault duties are in compliance with the latest editions of ANSI IEEE standards, the C37 series, as well as IEC standards, such as 60909 for AC systems and IEC 61660 for DC systems, as well as GOST. The results of these calculations can be viewed on either the one-line diagram or the GIS system. And with ETAP 22, you are also able to perform generator circuit breaker device duty evaluation per the latest IEC slash IEEE standard. We here at ETAP have a passion for power, and we're trusted by leading players across the global energy landscape, which is why we have the drive and desire to take the traditional calculations to the next level. This comprehensive device duty evaluation is especially useful for single phase and severely unbalanced distribution systems. A three phase system can be unbalanced due to either system unbalanced operations or unbalanced system components. This can also be the case for low voltage systems. Residential loads can cause an unbalanced system and other equipment such as untransposed lines, special transformers such as open delta transformers 
and Scott T transformers. If you work in the data centers, the prevalence of single phase loads from all the racks can cause an unbalanced system. The electrification of trains, they have an extensive single phase network. Complex industrial plants typically want to assess three phase versus line to ground faults and the effect of each for worst case condition. And of course, the penetration and prevalence of renewable energy for AC and DC networks. Traditional short circuit engines are not conducive to considering the complexity of these networks. A comprehensive unbalanced network short circuit solution is required. The unbalanced short circuit module represents the combined three phase and low voltage single phase system in the same unified model. The integrated system includes contributions from any three phase or single phase bus. For three phase sources, such as power grids and generators, specified specific unbalanced voltage and angles are considered. For untransposed lines, line configurations can be incorporated to calculate the impedance matrix or use an impedance branch to ultimately set the unbalanced impedance matrix. Projects with interconnected AC and DC systems, where the AC and DC systems are connected through converters such as rectifiers, UPSs, and inverters. In such systems, the AC and DC systems are interdependent. For a fault on the DC side, the short circuit currents are affected not only by the components in the DC system, but also the components in the AC system. Due to the combined AC-DC system representation in ETAP, ETAP automatically considers the effect of AC or DC for a fault on the DC or AC side. In ETAP 22, we have a new mode for unbalanced network short circuit. Now this is an addition and a completely different mode from our traditional balanced short circuit engine that many people here are familiar with and have been using for years with ETAP. Now essentially unbalanced network short circuit does have its own study case editor, but many of the options are similar um, to what you've had, to what you're familiar with when using the balanced short circuit engine. So you'll see many of the same options. First thing we want to do is select the standard. Um, and during this webinar, I will focus on ANSI. However, if you need to work on an IEC short circuit or Gauss short circuit, those standards are available as we previously discussed. Um, you will see that the, the motors and low voltage, the medium voltage and low voltage motors, the impedance um, for the, the connected equipment cables and overload heaters are automatically included. The zero sequence impedance is automatically included for branches and static loads. And we do have an additional option here for CLF, which is current limiting fuse. The current limiting fuse effect is considered when running the unbalanced network short circuit engine. So when we run a study, if you have and assign a current limiting fuse um, in the library, it will be considered. Previously, we cons we've, we've always considered it for arc flash. However, historically, we did not consider it for short circuit. It was an arc flash mitigation technique. Now it is included in the short circuit side as well. So I know many people will be happy to hear that. This unbalanced short circuit engine, as discussed, is a comprehensive solution. So we have our AC system, our DC system, multi-phase. It's all-encompassing. So within the study case, we define our parameters for the AC model and the DC model. Um, so, so in this case, we can look at our short circuit parameters, add our wind, wind turbine adjustments, either globally or individually, how we're going to apply the machine X over R, the, the interrupting capability for the high voltage circuit breaker, low voltage circuit breaker, the multiplication factors that are applied. All of these options were the same options that were used in the balanced short circuit engine, all based off ANSI standard. They're all included here as well. Uh, how we're going to do the device duty calculation, are we going to do it based on total bus fault current or the maximum through fault current? Again, these, these options are similar to, to what you're familiar with. And same as the DC side, determine how we're going to define our PV array contributions. 
from the short circuit curve or generation category, the charger short circuit model, and the motor short circuit internal voltage. So all of these parameters and characteristics are predefined and determine how these, these, this equipment is going to contribute to the faults in the overall calculation. Pre-fault voltage. Now the pre-fault voltage, we use the unbalanced load flow engine. Again, we're talking about systems with a lot of single phase equipment, three phase equipment. So in this case, we're going to use the unbalanced short circuit, unbalanced load flow engine. So we define our initial conditions. We set the categories. So within our generators, are we going to use design, normal, and we can select from a variety of generation categories and loading categories. Um, and then again on the DC equipment. Now, in the unbalanced load flow, we had to select AC and DC because we have the option to unify the AC and DC system in unbalanced load flow. So in one calculation, I run unbalanced load flow and you'll see it's a unified engine that solves the AC and DC system together. And this determines our pre-fault conditions for unbalanced short circuit. And, and we were talking about the categories again. And as a reminder, if I go into a DC motor, in the rating tab, I have 10 categories that I can define the loading conditions per category. And of course, if I wanted more, I can create another revision and, and assign different levels as well. So in this case, we're looking at design for our pre-fault condition. And it knows to go to every motor and look at what percentage is applied to that load at the design phase. Now here is one of our first major differences. Essentially, we have a table where you can select which buses to fault. This allows us to filter the selection. So if I want to see only faulted buses, just like Excel, I can easily create a filter that shows me all my faulted buses. Um, I can filter by bus ID. We can look at the phase. So in this case, I'm going to show all buses. And the, the faulted buses are highlighted in red, so you can clearly see which ones are faulted. I can look at the, the nominal KV and filter by voltage. Again, this is just like Excel, very familiar, so I can uncheck and check the ones I want to keep. Now, we also can filter by zone, area, and region. So if you have a massive project, uh, you can define zone, area, regions, and then filter specifically to that. In this case, I'm only showing one, but in a project, I can clearly delineate which buses are within a certain zone, area, or region. And if I've defined and assigned feeders, we can filter by feeders as well. Now the filtering process also helps us because if I want to run a short circuit calculation, but I want to include exclude filter elements, this means that I look at bus, let's say, bus 1 and bus 2 and bus 3. Now, I am no longer showing bus 1, bus 2, bus 3. However, they are faulted in the background. But if I do not display them, you have the option to exclude them in your study as well. So in this case, for example, if I search for bus 1 in this project, We look for bus one. It is not faulted. And the reason it is not faulted is because we're, we're excluding it from the list of devices because it's filtered. If I bring it back, it is now included in the overall list and now automatically faulted on the one line. So you can assign which buses you'd like to fault but if you want to do a quick what if scenario and not, and not consider certain amount of buses in that scenario, it's very easy. You don't have to clear them from being faulted. You can create a study case quickly 
and just make sure they're hidden from this filtered view. So that's a nice way. We can also instantly clear all the filters or uncheck this option. So regardless of what's showing in this element list, those pluses will always be faulted on the one line diagram as well. Now, on our fault options, I'm going to run a study for all faults in one simulation. You can isolate which fault type you want to run. So I can say, hey, in this case, I just want to run three phase to ground, three phase line to ground, line to line, or line to line to ground, all the fault types we, we discussed earlier. But I'm going to run all in a single shot. I'm going to run all the fault types for single phase faults and then for the DC. Now on my study mode toolbar, we can run device duty, the run DC device duty for DC equipment. This top one is for AC equipment. I can run maximum short circuit at half cycle, including all the fault types. I can run it from one and a half to four cycle, and I can run it from minimum short circuit at 30 cycle. These options are very similar to what you're familiar with in the standard um, AC short circuit calculation. However, the main difference in device duty is that we can run AC or DC within this solution. And when we run AC device duty, you can see on my tooltip that I'm running device duty for three phase to ground, line to ground, line to line, and line to line to ground in one simulation. So in this condition, I've run my short circuit on all the buses I have assigned to be faulted. And we can take a look at our alert page to determine which devices are alerted from this short circuit calculation. The alerting conditions are set in the study case editor. We can define the marginal conditions and determine whether include or exclude a second layer of alerts. The critical condition is set at 100% and you can see that it's defined for bus bracing and protective device capability. Now within the alert window, due to those settings, we have critical alerts and marginal alerts and we have the different IDs that have been flagged and alerted and you can see that you have all the fault types listed as well. So we can see three phase to ground, phase to ground for phase A, phase B, phase C, uh, phase to fit line to line to ground, A, B, B, C, C, A. All the different fault types are included in this device duty calculation. Historically, that was not the case. Historically, device duty was only utilizing the three phase fault. Now you can see alerted equipment per phase. So we see the rating, we see the operating condition per phase, A, B, C, and then of course the percentage. And in this case, I'm showing main bus one is alerted as well as fuse one. Um, marginally, that's close. That was above 95% as we set before, sub three switch gear and fuse four. And of course I can double click on any of the devices and my one line automatically moves and displays the device that I've double clicked. And on the one line, it is highlighted in a different color in red when it's critically alerted and maroon for marginally alerted conditions. Now, not only can you see these values in the alert page, I can hide the alert page, but I can also see them on the one line diagram. In my display options, I can decide which type of fault I want to see my results displayed on the one line. So if I, I have three phase, which is what we're currently seeing, I can change that to line to ground and apply which phase, in this case phase B, and I can see the results instantly. All of these conditions were automatically evaluated and calculated. You just have to determine which ones you want to display. Now we do have a data block concept as well. I can turn on data blocks and within my data block, I can, deter I can show multiple result types within one setting. 
So you can decide if you want to pick one fault type at a, at a time or build a data block that contains, that contains all of these results in one view. When working on a large scale distribution system, additional features are provided to help manage the project. In the study case editor, I can select to, to fault specific buses or we can fault all buses within a specific feeder. And if all buses are selected, I can isolate certain sections by substation or feeder identification. And similar to the one line diagram, I can run all fault types for three phase, single phase, all fight types for single phase in the DC system. Once the buses are selected, I can run and view the results on the one line diagram and the GIS. So if I run the solution, I see my results in both cases. And by synchronizing in the window option, if you, if you select sync presentations, I can select a particular location in the one line. And by synchronizing the two presentations, as I click on that location, the GIS updates so you, that you're always tracking the device that you select on the one line in your GIS database makes it very easy to track and manage uh, equipment that is widely dispersed. Now we can show, we mentioned earlier that I can show the results directly. Also have the option to turn on data blocks. And if I select the data blocks for my GIS and my one line diagram, in this case, I've selected to show the three phase and line to ground faults together um, within each presentation. So this is very helpful when working on large scale GIS systems. Additionally, we can run the short circuit calculations at different time. I can run the maximum at half cycle, one and a half to four cycle, or the minimum at 30 cycle. And when I run the study, again, all the fault types are simulated and I, I can select to determine which one I want to display on the one line diagram. Currently showing line to ground phase A, but I can simply change to three phase. Now, if I do want to focus on, let's say, line to ground in a particular phase, I can go into my study case editor. Under fault type, select line to ground phase A. I have an option for each phase. This example, I will use phase A. And when I run the short circuit calculation, you will notice that on the display options, I only have now run the simulation for that specific case. So the study case makes it very flexible in terms of whether you want to focus on a particular fault type and phase, or if you want to run all fault types across all phases and evaluate them concurrently. Let's consider a condition using a current limiting fuse. I have the current limiting fuse hidden. And to enable, I just right click for show PD. Now it's activated. It is visibly there. However, based on the study case option, it is not included. So we will run a three phase maximum short circuit calculation. As we can see, the results here is 9.6 Ka with a through fault contribution of 8.7. So 9.6, 8.7. If we select a study case that includes a CLF, so in this condition, I have it selected in this scenario, it's now including CLF. I can remember it's 9.6, 8.7. We run it one more time. And it went from 9.6 and 8.7 to 7.22, and the through fault contribution decreased to 6.6. We can look at that comparison in the output report database. So I can select the duty, the report I'm using, ANSI unbalanced duty. I go to current limiting fuse results table. And within this table, I can see that the, the previous through fault current we looked at was 8.8, 8.7, which is shown on this table. And if we were, and this one we see here is 6.621, which we see the let through is 6.621. So this was previous, this was without, within this result viewer in this report database, we can see it side by side the effect of that current limiting fuse. On the toolbar, we have a quick pick. It essentially, when I select 
when I select it, if I just click, it will change the result that's being displayed, or I can click and hold and then pick the one specifically that I want. So that's a very quick way to change the display result on the one line diagram. And same thing for the value. Whether it's phase or sequence, I can simply change from the toolbar directly. Before we look at the output reports, one another feature that was released with ETAP 22 is a new standard for generator circuit breaker evaluation. In order to run device duty, use, utilizing a generator circuit breaker standard, IEC slash IEEE, which was released with ETAP 22, First, we need to associate this breaker as a generator circuit breaker, assign the generator, which is known from the connection, and then in the library menu, select the applicable standard. Once that's selected and we run a device duty calculation, you can see in the output report, generator circuit breaker duty summary is now available. I'm going to select summary, which contains the reports of all the listed ones within the report manager. And on the first page, I can see the, the generator circuit breaker that we evaluated for that was faulted on sub 2B. The device was CB4. We can look at different conditions, which is automatically assessed, the device capability for each of those conditions, and then the duty results. So if we had any alerted conditions, we would see it would be flagged in this output report. And here's a summary of the momentary and interrupting results. And then we can move through and I can take a look at all the bus, the, the faulted buses and the short circuit calculations against the device ratings. And when there's conditions that are exceeded, such as in this case at the main bus, um, you will see that the, the alerted conditions are highlighted in the output report. And again, point of emphasis, is that you have all the fault types listed on this output report, makes it very easy to compare each one against the device capability. I know I've said that quite a few times here today, but it's, it's very critical and powerful as to the ability provided from this solution. The Unbalanced Network Short Circuit Engine also has the ability to run short circuit calculations for simultaneous faults. Users can select multiple short circuit locations of different fault types, and the program calculates system conditions with all the faults occurring simultaneously. The results displayed are voltages on all the buses and fault currents in all the branches, individual motors, generators, and utility ties in the system. Simultaneous faults can occur um, from weather conditions due to thunderstorms, or very special cases such as verifying a single pole rating of a circuit breaker in an ungrounded system when two ground faults occur on two different phases. So when I select this bus one and sub three, I can, I can select the fault type. So for bus one, let's select three phase to ground and I'll keep this as line to ground for sub bus three. And we'll run this at maximum duty or maximum short circuit half cycle. And in the display options, I now have, an, I ha I now have the option to show simultaneous faults. Um, previously, it was still showing my last result, which was line to ground. So when I change to simultaneous faults, I'm now running a short circuit study for, for faults happening concurrently at sub three and sub and bus one. And you can see that this line to ground fault is 27 KA. And because there was a line to ground fault on sub three, there is no contribution to the three phase fault at bus one. So the fault condition at sub three had a direct effect on the result to the fault at bus one. So within this unbalanced network short circuit, I can select simultaneous faults for any of the buses fault, any of the buses in the system. And within the fault type, I can select all, any of the, the fault types we've discussed before. And back on the shunt faults, the last part of our evaluation is on the DC side. 
So I could easily filter by DC buses. I can see that I have many of my DC buses faulted. I can include or exclude straight from this list. Once defined, I will use my composite network and we can see the DC system which is connected electrically from the AC network we were previously looking at. Within this composite network, I can either enter the composite network from the one line or from this pull down menu and we see that the faulted buses are indeed in red. Um, I have my PV system here accounted for for a future rene renewable energy expansion. Now you can include or exclude these any expansion, any future modifications through the revision manager. So in this case, I have I have a revision specific to solar. I have one for batteries. Um, I can look at any type of modification in the future. Other examples provided are ZSI. So in the protective devices in this project, we can decide whether we want the zone selective interlocking on or off. But in this case, we're evaluating the DC system. Uh, I will consider the solar included and within the same unbalanced network short circuit mode, I can run my DC device duty. I see my results similar to AC and then my alerted conditions. And when I double click, it highlights the device that's alerted and we see the details here based on the rating of that device and the operating conditions and then the percentage overloaded. Unbalanced network short circuit is the foundation for complex or unbalanced system protection and coordination studies. STAR-Z, which is ETEP's transmission and distribution protection coordination software, offers insights into line protection, protective relay performance and evaluation, troubleshooting false trips, and system-wide protective device operation under steady state or transient actions. Besides the fault types discussed today, sliding faults can also be evaluated using STAR-Z. Protection equipment such as distance and differential are modeled using vendor-specific functions which are continuously updated in our library. With STAR-Z, we can simulate and verify the protection settings, the logics, and their dynamic interactions to ensure power system stability and grid code compliance. Functions including out-of-step relay evaluation, loss of excitation simulation, scene impedance versus time and relay characteristic plots are all included. For more information, please visit our website etab.com and you can watch case studies and tutorials on transmission and distribution system protection. In summary, we learned about the power and many of the key benefits using ETAP's unbalanced network short circuit analysis. We saw examples and projects applying device duty evaluation for multi-phase, single phase, and AC and DC systems. We were able to run and evaluate all fault types in a single study. These fault types could be applied to shunt, series, and simultaneous faults. And when you utilize transmission and protection systems, the STAR-Z, you're able to simulate protective device responses to fault currents and configuration changes. The standards applied for these unbalanced network short circuit cal calculations include ANSI C37.10 for AC systems, IEC 60909, and IEC 61660 for DC systems. Thank you so much for joining us today on this webinar. We look forward to having you on the next one. Again, thank you for your time.